chant and dance as much as possible in this human form of life. And the first canto, in the first chapter, as we as we just mentioned, the first three verses are glorifying itself. The very first verse, very famous verse, which we all would have come across time and again. Uh, the first verse very beautifully says, Janma dhyasya yaton vayaditaratas Charteshu abhignyaswarat Tene brahmaridaya adikavaye Moihyanti yat suraya Tejo vari mridam yatha vinimayo Yatratri sargo mrisha Dhamna svena sada nirasta kuhakam Satyam param dhimahe Very beautiful. First canto, first chapter, first verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Now, this verse, dear devotees, has a very deep meaning. Very deep meaning. We would all have heard in the previous discussions uh, what the basic understanding of this verse is. We see this verse ends by saying, Satyam Param Dhimahi. Uh, who is that Satyam? Oh, it is Sri Krishna. Krishna is addressed as Satyam in this verse. Who is the personality who has to be understood behind all the scriptures? Who is the crest jewel, the essence personality who has, to, who has to be understood behind this scripture called as Bhagavatam? Oh, well, that personality is the Supreme Lord, Shri Krishna. So this word, it says Satyam Param Dhimahi. Krishna is addressed as Satyam. Dear devotees, this word is so deep, just as a side point. Uh, our Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, the Guru of Srila Prabhupada, in the month of Karthik in the 1930s, Saraswati Thakur ended up speaking for one month on just on this one verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam. So from this we can understand there is so much depth to this verse, much more than what we have actually heard. And as far as the commentaries are concerned, there are 108 prominent commentaries just on this one verse of Bhagavatam. So it's a very, very, very deep verse. What does it say? It says Satyam Param Dhimahi. Who is that Satyam? Krishna. Because we see in the 10th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, the second chapter, when Krishna has just appeared in the body of Maya Devaki, the demigods are offering prayers to Krishna. And there we find the demigods are addressing Krishna as Satyam. Satyascha yoni nihitam cha Satyam. They call Krishna. So the demigods there we find Krishna is addressed as Satyam. Satyatmakam tvam sharanam prapanna. Very beautiful. So they say that who is this personality who is Satyam? Well, he is none other than Supreme Personality of God at Sri Krishna. So Satyam. And who is Param? Now, this is something which we may or may not have heard. Param is none other than Srimati Radharani. Why? Because in the Rig Veda, the Bij Mantra, the seed, the Bij Mantra for Radha Nam. Now, for those who are doing Gayatri, who are Brahminically in initiated, will be knowing Bij Mantras. So, in the Rig Veda, it is said the Bij Mantra for Radha Nam is Rama. R and Ma. So the Bij Mantra for Radha Nam is Rama, that is Ram. So naturally, if Ram means Radharani, Param also means Srimati Radharani. So this word Param is none other than Radhika and Satyam is none other than Sri Krishna. So Satyam Param Dhimahi means I offer my obeisances to that Supreme Personality of God at Sri Krishna who is always there with Srimati Radharani who is addressed as Param. This is the first verse, dear devotees. And not just Rig Veda. Even our Kaviraj Goswami in the Chaitanya Charita myth, he makes the same point. He addresses Srimati Radharani similarly. Uh, our Kaviraj Goswami, he says, Devi Krishna Mai Prokta Radhika Paradevata He says, Devi Krishna Mai Prokta Radhika Paradevata So there also, we find the Acharyas make this point. Radhika Paradevata. Radharani is addressed as Para or Param. 
So Satyam means Krishna and Param means Srimadhi Radharani. So Satyam Param Dhimahi means I offer my obeisances to Radharani and Krishna. We see in the first verse itself, Bhagavatam is making it very clear. The essence, the crux of this scripture is not Lakshmi and Narayan, but it is Radha and Krishna. Radha and Krishna, not of Krishna, not of Dwaraka or not of Mathura, but Radharani and Krishna of Brindavan Dham. The very first verse makes it very clear. And dear devotees, this verse doesn't end here. It says Satyam Param Dhimahi, but it starts off by saying Janmad Yasya. So now when Radharani and Krishna come together and when they perform their pastimes, uh, Radha Krishna Eka Atma Duhi Deha Dari. Radharani and Krishna are one personality, Eka Atma, but Duhi Deha Dari. Now they have taken two forms. But so now Radharani and Krishna, when they come together and when they perform pastimes, what happens? It gives Janma, it gives birth to Adiras or Madhure Ras. So that's how the word starts. Janma Dyasya. Uh, it can be split up as Janma Adi. So when Satyam and Param come together, Radharani and Krishna come together, it gives birth, that is Janma, to Adiras. Janma Dyasya. This is the first verse, dear devotees. The first verse itself makes it absolutely crystal clear that what we are looking out is Radharani and Krishna and that too Radharani and Krishna in Vrindavan who are there in the realm of Madhurya Ras. Very, very first verse of Bhagavatam. So beautiful. Uh, the second verse. Dharma projita kaitavatra paramo nirmat saranam satam vedyam vastavam astra vastu shivadam tapatrayon mulanam uh, shrimad bhagavate mahamunikrite kimva pararishwara sadyo rid avarudyate kritivihi shushru shubhi takshanat. The second verse of the Bhagavatam. The reason I'm going is from first verse is, as Hari Prabhu initially mentioned, uh, the verse 23rd is the last verse of the scripture, of this chapter. So we will be ending this chapter today. So we will try to do a, a rough overview so that when we go to the second chapter, we are fresh as to what are the things that were covered in the first chapter. So this verse, it says, Dharma projita kaitavatra paramo. Srimad Bhagavatam kicks away all the cheating religion. There is no scope for any cheating religion. No mixed or no tainted philosophy is presented. The highest truth of Radharani and Krishna is presented in the scripture. And who can understand the scripture? Nirmatsaranam satam. Those who are nirmatsara. Those who are non-envious. So many times we see that envy is compared to a fish. It, the, the root word is matsarya. You see, matsarya is always called as envy. So matsarya comes from the root matsya, which means fish. So now naturally this question arises, why is envy compared to a fish? What's the connection? Well, the connection, dear devotees, is it's always seen that when uh, there is a big fish in a pond and associated with the big fish is when there are small fish, the big fish has this feeling in its heart that this small fishes over a period of time will become big in size and they will start eating me up. So let us not wait till the time when the small fish becomes a big fish. Before the small fish becomes a big fish, let me eat that fish up. So this is the tendency, this is the mindset of the fish. So that is why the envy is compared to that of the fish, uh, matsarya or matsya. So Nirmatsaranam Sata means this scripture is meant for Nirmatsarya, those who are non-envious, those who are non-duplicitous, those who are very kind-hearted and very straightforward. Only they can understand the scripture. And Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu Shivadam. Who is the Vastava Vastu? Who is that personality who is to be understood behind the scripture? Vedyam, that is Sri Krishna. Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu Shivadam Tapatrayon Mulanam. And by understanding the scripture, Tapatrayon Mulanam, the three tap of Adi Devik, Adi Bhautik, and Adhyatmik are removed from the heart. Srimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite, who is speaking this literature? Mahamuni Vyasadev, who is not different from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he is presenting this literature. Srimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite, 
kimva parar ishvare so what is the use what is the need for any other scripture when this scripture is offering love of godhead when this scripture is giving prema love for radharani and krishna kimva parar what is the need for any other scripture why do we require any other scripture when one this one scripture can give love for radhika and krishna kimva parar ishvaro sadyo rid avarudyate kritibhi tat shushush vi takshanat by studying the scripture the supreme lord ashri krishna is firmly established in the heart of the readers of the listeners you see just like bilva mangala thakur we celebrated purushottam month so we see when we sing the chaurashtakam prayers the last verse bilva mangala thakur very beautifully he says karagre vas sadar dhaye madiye मद्भक्ति पाश दृढ़ बंधन निश्चल सन तम कृष्ण हे प्रलय कोटी सतांतरे मद्भक्तिर्वस्व चौर हृदय नोचयामी बिल्व मंगल ठाकुर सेज ओ माई डियर लॉर्ड चीटिंग एंड लाइंग एंड स्टीलिंग इज नेवर एनकरेज बट माई डियर लॉर्ड यू हेव स्टोलन सो मेनी टाइम्स यू हेव चीटेड सो मेनी टाइम्स यू हेव लाइड सो मेनी टाइम्स and for this reason you need appropriate punishment uh, those who are stealing should never be let out in the public so my dear lord you have stolen so many times you require appropriate punishment and for this reason karagre vas sada my dear lord i have bound you in my heart karagre vas sada it's very dark it's a prison house but my dear lord i have bound you in my heart how have how has bilva mangala thakur bound the supreme personality of godhead mad bhakti paash drida bandhana he has bound krishna through his bhakti the ropes of devotion has bound krishna in the heart of bilva mangala thakur so similarly dear devotees this verse it says that anyone who studies this scripture bhakti rises in the heart ha bhakti utpadyate pumsam and when bhakti rises in the heart krishna is established in the heart takshanat immediately the lord is established but this word takshanat has a very hidden meaning one meaning of takshanat shana means time which means krishna very immediately very spontaneously is present in the heart of the readers and listeners but another meaning of takshana shana also means festival or mahotsavam which means when krishna is established in the heart of the reader or the listener he establishes he experiences a festival of joy he experiences a festival of happiness in his heart takshanat two meanings to the word kshana one is time that is krishna is immediately present in the heart established in the heart and second kshana also means mahotsavam or a festival which means the readers and the listeners have a festival of joy a festival of happiness in their heart shushush bhi takshanat very beautiful then the third verse again very famous nigama kalpaturur galitam phalam shuka mukhad amrita dravam samyutam pibata bhagavata rasamalayam muhraho rasika bhuvi bhavuka what does this verse say well this verse is actually an invitation to all the readers and the listeners the bhagavatam is inviting everyone please come and read me the first words describes the sambandha tatva uh, in the second words it makes it very clear that there is no scope for any cheating religion and in the third words bhagavatam is inviting everyone please come and read the scripture nigama kalpataru a uh, nigama means vedas a uh, nigama kalpataru the vedas are compared to a desire fulfilling tree a kalpataru tree and naturally we know kalpataru tree is tree is a, a tree which grants whatever we desire so it is said that instead of going to this kalpataru tree which is the vedas instead of asking them uh, what we want ideally a person should go up to them and ask instead of giving me what i want please give me what is best for me uh, please do not give me what i want but give what is best for me when this when this proposal 
is made to the Vedas who are like the wish fulfilling tree. A very beautiful fruit falls from the tree. And this fruit, dear devotees, is the fruit called as Srimad Bhagavatam. And how is this fruit? Nigama Kalpatarur Galitam Falam. Uh, it is Galitam Falam. It is a ripened fruit. We see just like mango is considered the king of all the fruits. So Galitam Falam. But we also see that the mango, there is a chance that the mango can become rotten. It can rot. If not rot, uh, the mango has a covering outside. Even if you take the covering out from outside, there is a seed that is present inside. But dear devotees, Galitam Falam, this Srimad Bhagavatam is such a scripture. There is no covering outside. There is no seed inside and it is not rotten, but it uplifts the jivas who are in a rotten condition of life. This is Srimad Bhagavatam. Nigama Kalpatarur Galitam Falam. And who is speaking? Shuka Mukhad Amrita Dravasam Yutam. Shukadev Goswami is speaking. Who is Radharani's parrot? Who is sitting on the hand of Srimati Radhika? He is speaking. So naturally it is known that the mango which is already sweet becomes more sweet when the parrot puts its beak inside the mango fruit. Similarly, it is said, dear devotees, the Bhagavatam is sweet. But when Shukadev Goswami, who is Radhika's parrot, when he speaks Bhagavatam, when his bhav gets mixed with the pages of the Bhagavatam, the Bhagavatam, which is already sweet, becomes more sweet. Shuka Mukhad Amrita Drava Samyutam Pibata Bhagavatam Don't study the scripture. Pibata, drink the scripture. Pibata Bhagavatam Rasamalayam We see, just like the house of books is called as grantalai. The house of food is called as bhojanalai. The house of knowledge is called as vidyalai. Naturally, this Bhagavatam is called as the house of treasure. Rasamalai. It's a treasure house of nectar. Rasamalai. So naturally, it is saying Muraho rasika bhuvi bhavuka. So please come and taste this nectar, which is called as Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, so in this way, dear devotees, the first three verses, they set a platform uh, for all the remaining cantos of the Srimad Bhagavatam.